In this video, we're going to import a downloaded 3D model into Rhino and put some V-Ray materials on it. I've downloaded this model file in an FBX format, which is a fairly common interchange format for 3D models. And I downloaded it from the Open 3D Model website and I have unpacked it into a folder on my operating system. And in Rhino, I've made a platform I'm going to place it on. This is a very abstract scene. I'm just going to bring it in and place it, and then we'll put some light over it and do some tests. So let's import it using the import command. Go to our folder, and I'm going to use the FBX file. And I am not going to import lights or cameras. I'm not sure if there are any in the scene, and I'm not even going to prompt to scale. And this is what I get. If I zoom selected, I can see my object is rotated. So I'm going to click once on the red arc uh, on my gumball. Really important that I'm working with my gumball turned on. So at the base of my screen, I've got gumball enabled. And by clicking on my red arc, I can type in 90. And now I have rotated that object accordingly. Let's deselect it, and it looks like it has multiple components on it. So if I want to use this model as a prop, I should ask myself if I need more than one of these or not. Let's say I'm going to use this <clears throat> all over my scene. Maybe it's not a toy, but perhaps it's a chair or some other object. In that case, I should really think about making a block of this object because that will give me a great deal of... Um, help in placing and updating and, and, and locating these objects. So in, in anticipation of turning this into a block, I'm going to go to my front view and use my gumball to drag it up so that it is centered generally on my origin, my 000 origin. And let's make a few materials. I think this is going to be made mostly out of wood, so I'll make a generic material. Let me call it toy wood. Open this up to the right. And for now, I'm not going to use a texture. I can come back later and add one. I'm going to just make this generally wood toned. Okay. And I'm going to make another material generic type. And I'll call this toy metal, and I'm going to make my metal very dark in color, pretty high in reflection, turn off my Fresnel, and bring my glossiness down very low, something like that. There we go. And I'm going to apply my wood to all of my object. So I'll select it all, select my Material, apply to selection, and then I'm going to come back in and apply my metal oops, only to my wheels. There we go. So now I have two different materials assigned. I'm going to type in the command block. When I'm prompted, select objects to define the block. I'm going to drag a window around all of these objects and hit enter. My block base point, I moved this toy so it was centered above 0, 0, 0 and pretty much resting on the ground plane of a Z of 0. So I'm going to choose 0, 0, 0 for my block base point. I'm going to type that in and let's call this toy truck. It doesn't look any different, but notice if I click this, I am selecting the entire object. And if I look at it in my properties inspector, it tells me this is a block instance. And in maybe another video, we can get deeper into blocks. I can update it and make changes. If I had a thousand of these in a toy truck factory and they were all the same block, I could make a change to every one of those instantaneously if I updated this one block. So it's a very powerful, um, tool. Let me move this so it is generally centered on my floor and in my V-Ray compact menu I'm going to make a rectangle light. 
something along those lines. Looks like that light is pointing up, so I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees to point down. And go to my settings for V-Ray. Let's turn off our environment. So the only the only light will be coming from this V-Ray planar light. And let's render, see what we get. My camera is currently overexposed or my light is overexposed. And because I'm not dealing with sunlight, I need to make a judgment call on this. I think I'm going to bring my camera exposure more in line with sunlight settings. So bring that up to a 14. And if I render now, my initial starting point for my light settings is not terrible. I'm getting some light there. Let me zoom in. I can see I'm getting that grayish metal materiality on the wheels. I'm getting that tone of wood on the wood object on the, the rest of the toy. Of course, I could make a material with textures. I could take my time to define mapping for all of these components. But in a nutshell, that's importing an object that importantly wasn't made, most likely in V-Ray existed as, or in Rhino, existed as an FBX file out there on the internet. And I brought it in and kind of packaged it and made it useful in a scene here in uh, V-Ray for Rhino.